Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode 46 of the ES335 build. Been away for a little bit, I had a lovely break over Christmas, but I'm raring to get going again. So let's crack on by breaking out the spray gun and shooting some lacquer. Okay, so there's plastic on the wall and that can only really mean one thing, can't it? It's time to get some lacquer onto this guitar. However, I don't want it all lacquering at the same time. There's going to be a number of coats of lacquer going onto this thing and I don't want it all on every single bit of the guitar. So the first thing we're going to have to do is get some masking onto it. And the first bit I'm going to mask up is the binding on both the top and the back of the guitar. And for that I'm going to use some of this 6mm kind of PVC masking tape. Okay, so that's the binding masked off. Um, I've tried to get it as close as I can to the inside of these lines where they meet the side of the guitar. It's not absolutely vital for it to be 110% accurate. If there's any kind of uneven lines or kind of gaps or whatever, once I've taken this masking off, I can just, again, just use one of these little razor blades as a little scraper and clean that line up. I'm gonna to have to scrape the top of the binding anyway. There's no real way you can mask that off. It's like a, a mil and a half wide. You just wouldn't be able to do it. So I'm gonna to have to scrape that. So a little bit of scraping on the sides isn't really a massive issue either. So with that done, next up, I'm just going to mask up the fretboard where it meets the body. And I'm leaving that little wedge of maple that we put in in the other episode exposed so that that will get some of the color that's going on the body onto it and then hopefully that will make it disappear once we've finished with the spraying I just want a couple of lengths right the way along the fretboard I'm not going to mask this binding on the side of the fretboard because I'm just going to cover the whole of the neck and the headstock with some masking paper for the time being because I don't want anything getting on that just yet. Okay, so there's the neck masked off, all the bindings masked off. Um, and we're pretty much ready to go. Now the only thing I need to do before we start to spray this is just to do something about these F-holes because I don't really want too much finish going inside of the F-holes. It's going to be very difficult to mask those so what I'm going to do is I've got some foam that I'm going to cut to an appropriate size and we're just going to stick it into the F-hole area and hopefully because it will be compressed it will hold itself in place. So I'll just go and cut some of that and we'll get back to it. Okay, so I've just done this top one. So I'll just get a bit of foam into the other one. And it's simply just a case of cramming it in. And it might not be a perfect fit. Obviously, there's a bit of a gap there, but it will stop the bulk of the finish going in there and it will definitely stop it spraying onto the back of the guitar because I don't want that at all. And then all I'll have to do once this is kind of properly dried is I'll just pull that out. You might have to cut it away from the edges where it's touching a little bit and then just clean that up. But more often than not, that just pulls out without a problem at all. Okay, so that's all the prep work done. So now I need to do a little bit of rearranging in the workshop 
and get everything set up ready for spraying. Now for obvious reasons I don't like to use my good cameras when I'm spraying so I'm going to switch to kind of a, a fairly cheap camcorder for doing this so it won't be bad quality but it just won't be quite as good. So apologies for that but I don't want to wreck my good kit. Okay, so we're ready to, to get started mixing the first batch of colour up. Um, it's really important when you're doing this to keep as clean as you possibly can. So my mixing bench has got a nice bit of, of clean paper over it. Like I say, I've covered everything with plastic to try and keep it from getting covered in overspray. I've totally cleaned the workshop today. I've hoovered it, I've swept it, I've got as much of the dust out of here as possible and anything that is likely to have dust remaining in it, I've covered over so we can minimize the amount that gets blown into the air and hopefully keep this job nice and clean while we're doing it. It's a bit cold and it's a bit damp today. It's kind of getting towards the end of December in England. Um, so it's very wintry weather. So I've had heaters running in the workshop for quite a long time now and it's up to a nice toasty temperature. So, Hopefully that won't be a problem, but I've got some anti-bloom thinner as well. So hopefully that will stop that being an issue. Um, I don't see that it will be. So I'm gonna get the first batch of color mixed up. And what I'm gonna use first is, it's just from Northwest Guitars, we'll get all my paint from these days. Um, and this is their vintage amber, which I'm gonna use as the base coat on the body because not that it was ever in any doubt, this is gonna be a sunburst finish, okay? Let's get mixing. Now for this first couple of coats, I'm going to go about 50-50. Okay. Now that might seem quite thin to some people, but I don't want to get too much colour onto this in one go, so I'd much rather put lots and lots of thin coats down. So I can build the colour up slowly. Now that might look very, very brown when it's in the cup, but it won't go on that colour. Okay, so there we are ready to go. So I'm gonna to swap to my other camera and get masked up and start to get the first coats on this thing. Okay, so that's the, the base coats laid down and you can actually see for the first time the figure in the wood. So that's looking quite nice. And there's the back. There's a couple of little knots and marks in the back, but I think that just gives it a bit more character. So 
The next thing we need to do is to spray the burst onto this. But before we do that, I need to take the masking off from the neck and the fingerboard because I need to remask in a slightly different way because I want some of the burst to kind of blend into the back of the neck, kind of in this, this area here. And I also want the back of the headstock and the transition from the headstock into the neck to have a little bit of that burst pattern as well. So this is kind of touch dry now. It's still quite soft, but we'll be able to work on it. So I'll get this back off the hook onto the bench and we'll start to sort this masking out. Okay, so that's the old stuff off. And now we just need to mask off the fingerboard again and the face of the headstock. Okay, so that's all masked up again. So we can get this back on its hook and then start to mix the second colour. Okay, so to get the colour that I want for this burst, um, and I want it to be kind of like a cherry burst that's been left to fade for 30 years or so. I'm going to start off with the amber that we've put on the guitar already. And to give it a little bit more intensity of colour, I'm going to put a little bit of rosewood spirit stain in. followed by some red. Just drop a little bit in. Now this might seem a little bit kind of trial and error in terms of mixing up. But what will happen is I will kind of create a colour that I'm happy with in terms of shade and then I'll bring the intensity up in the burst just by putting several layers on where I need it. And that doesn't look very red so I'm just going to put a bit more in. I haven't got a lot left. And that's got a much more ready orange look to it. This is now a lot thinner than the original coat that I put on. And that will just help me to control the colour a little bit more. Okay, so I'll just spray a very quick coat around the sides of this and then just see if I need to adjust the colour any. I 
I've jumped forward a little bit. Um, I haven't filmed all of this because it's just such an in-depth process that it's difficult. Um, but I've got the first burst coats on. Um, I'm very pleased with that. Needs a little bit of evening up work to be done. But on the whole, I think that's looking rather nice. It's, it's the shade I want it to be. I'm not sure that it's reflecting very well in the pictures. I'm aiming for what I would describe as a nice tea burst. So it's replicating a guitar that's kind of aged quite a bit and the colors have bleached out and faded over time. And I think that's actually looking quite nice. It doesn't really work and you don't really get the full effect until you get the masking and the binding cleaned up. But on the whole, I'm happy with that. Um, it's not really showing very well in the camera, but the flame in the maple is looking lovely as well. Okay, so that's the burst touched in now. Um, really happy with that. It's nice and even, which is great. It can sometimes be a little bit misleading because the base colour is kind of quite flat now, whereas the burst colour is glossy. Um, but that doesn't really give you an indication of the depth of colour, it just gives you an indication of how glossy something is or not. So it can be very difficult at times just to make out exactly what's going on, but having looked at this in various different lights, it is actually quite even and I am happy with it. So the next stage in the process is to get some clear coats onto this, but Obviously before I do that, I need to scrape the bindings down, get all that nice and clean, and I can't do that until this coat of lacquer is nice and dry. So I'm gonna leave this now. I might pull the masking off in a minute if I can, um, just to give me a head start on the morning, but I'm gonna leave it overnight and then scrape the binding in the morning in preparation for the clear coats. And there, I think that gives a much, much better impression of what this guitar is gonna look like when it's actually completely finished. Just taking that masking off and revealing the binding just completely changes the look of the guitar. And once I get the binding on the top scraped out as well, that will just kind of give it that added pop as well. So yeah, really, really happy with how that's gone. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this to harden up overnight, but I'm also gonna leave this episode here because I think we've covered enough and it's getting quite long. Um, so I'll be back in a few days time when we'll pick up by scraping these bindings down, getting everything cleaned up and getting prepared to spray the top coats. I'm really pleased with how this has gone. I think it's, it's kind of like a really momentous part of the build to get some finish on. And it has been a really long road getting here. So to get these results so far is, is really pleasing for me. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. If so, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you very, very soon for the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.